Last year I helped a friend produce some fancy light switches. These are capacitive touch uh, and I ended up making the frames and I also ended up designing the circuit for them as well but that was all subbed out in the end. Uh, so that's your basically your, your wall plate which just screws onto a standard back box and then your uh, capacitive touch plate goes on the front. They came out quite nice but now we're looking at a, a new version, this is the, the mould I put together, well most of it, so there's one of the, the frames, uh, there was a, a section, uh, several of these so that we could do a succession of different plates with different numbers of grids on them, this was the base plate and then there was just a, a feed plate on the back. What we've now got to do is produce another version of this which is basically going to be a frame, so we're looking at just a simple plastic frame like this but it's slightly complicated because there needs to be a cutaway under either side otherwise this could be just six millimeter per specs and it could just be laser cut out so uh, from the side we've actually got to produce something like this and it's a little uh, trickier than it seems because this has got to fit an existing glass front panel and this front panel is obviously a set dimension which means this has got to be hit exactly uh, and that's a little tricky in plastics because plastics tend to shrink and if I quickly measure up this plate and see what diameter I actually cut I'm getting about 86.6 millimeters but if I actually measure the finished molding I'm actually getting 86.07 so that has shrunk by about half a millimeter uh, and that's pretty typical with plastics. So when it comes to making this, I've got to basically cut the thing about half a millimetre larger than I need so that when it shrinks it will be exactly the right size for the, uh, uh, the uh, glass plate that's going in. Now, because I've already got a few plates here, I think I can reuse this one. And I have actually drawn it up. So um, I've already got some pry points here on the mould. Uh, I need to, uh, I've got some points on here for magnets but I didn't use them so I'm going to add some more uh, just in case and then I've got to redrill these for the guide pins uh, and that's a fairly straightforward one to do. The others I'm going to have to cut from fresh and basically what I'm going to do here is start with a base plate and then I'm going to have a slightly tapered core inside uh, and this is so that I can get the thing off so the actual frame is going to sit in here and then this will simply be bolted in from the back and then I'll have some guide pins standing up and a surround which goes over the top like that and just drops down onto the top and then there'll be some more guide pins standing up where this top plate will then come down on top of there. So that's the, uh, the basic idea. Uh, if I can grab my files uh, my sheets here, my design files. Basically this is going to be the, the bottom sheet so again I'm just going to have some uh, little cutaways on the edge so I can get a screwdriver in and pry the mould apart when, it, when it's uh, all cooled down and contracted. Uh, we've got uh, some mounting hole points here which are standard for the mould base that I use. A couple of 5mm holes here which will have the, uh, the pins on them and these are simply uh, uh, cap screws which just happen to be the right size to act as guide pins a couple of holes from the back and that will secure this on which I need to pocket out and obviously I need a runner on the front to get the plastic into the frame that will go around the outside so I'm figuring I'll do this uh, in quadrants because uh, then I'm not trying to flow all the way around and get weak weld lines. Some little gates should do the job uh, and then the complicated part is this one because I'm going to have to come in here in sections uh, to pocket all of this inside out so this will be the outside of the frame I'm going to need to put a few uh, little um, marks on here so that I can re-reference this because I suspect that I'm going to have to come back in and do this. Uh, I need 79.4 millimeters across the, the little vent slots and then I need 85.4 on the outside diameter. So I'm probably going to have to cut this about 85.9 but I'm going to start with it a bit small and then come in with the little purple line you can see around the edge and just open that up slightly. So uh, that's the more difficult plate and it's probably going to need some modification. And then on the inside of that I'm going to need some vents and probably some more magnets just to hold it all together. So this one's fairly straightforward. But uh, that's the one I'm going to have to worry about. 
But before we get to that stage, I think we'll do the base plate and this uh, centre core uh, and put those together and then take it from there. Right, first plate lined up, 5mm slot drill. Going to take the 1mm uh, deep uh, cross shaped runner out to begin with and maybe put a well at the centre uh, and then the four gates around the edges. Uh, then I need to pocket it all out, so I'm going to start with the sides, swing in with the clamps, and then take the tops out. And that should get the first bit done. And I need to do that first because I need to be able to drop that into the surround plate to make sure it fits. I can always adjust the surround plate, and that's an easier job to do rather than surround first and the core second. So let's get started. Okay, I've just spun around that again very quickly and just taking it from 2mm in the middle to 1mm at the edges so there's a slight taper on there ideally I could do with a slight taper on the walls as well but I think it'll come out but putting that slight taper on should just give it a bit more flow from the centre outwards and make it a bit stronger when we do want to lift it out so I'll now just put a slight spot in the centre for a a well, and then we'll do the gates around the edges. gone all the way through, so swap the bit for a three degree taper. And then I'm just going to take these two edges off and put a slight draft angle on them so that uh, the moulding will slide over this in theory. was a very slight finishing pass with a three degree taper cutter and with a bit of luck that should measure up as per the schematic. Only one way to find out. Yeah well I can feel a very slight taper on the sides which is good. In fact just if I can catch it in the light, maybe there, you can perhaps just see that there is a very, very slight taper on these sides. So that, with a bit of luck, will help me get it out of the mould. Uh, but uh, apart from drilling a couple of holes on the back, and I have marked it up so I know which side to do these on. Uh, so that's that plate done. Right, this is going to be the surround plate, so obviously I need to chop the centre out. But I'm going to start off with four holes for the uh, guide pins in the corners and four sockets for uh, some little magnets, which I don't always need to add, but uh, it just helps keep the plates together when the mould's closing. So uh, I cut the sockets just in case. But um, first part, get those cut, and then we'll start work on the centre section.
Next stage is to give myself a couple of clearance slots with a 5mm slot drill and these are going all the way through. Okay, this is where it gets a little trickier because I need to come down to 4.5 millimeters to leave uh, the little ledge here, which is going to form the vent. So I'm going to come in about half a millimeter smaller than I need, uh, come in and hit the corner so that I don't leave a mark on on the walls. Uh, and I've set this plate to set the the bit to the exact surface of uh, the plate, so uh, we should go exactly 4.5 millimeters deep. I think you can perhaps now see where we're heading. This is going to be our uh, little vent ledge. Uh, and then we're going to come in around the outside and uh, take this thing out. But we're not quite finished yet. Because hopefully you can see this ledge that I've left here and uh, that's got to fit this and I should have cut that a little under quite a way under actually and according to my sketch this should be 79.4 and I'm getting if I can get it straight a bit difficult on the taper but I'm getting 79.3 Eight. So that is pretty much spot on. And across here I'm currently getting, let's see, 77.09. So I need to just come in and take uh, a couple of millimetres, maybe one millimetre off each of these. Uh, and then we've got a pocket around that. So uh, I'll figure out the numbers for this and we'll just take a couple of thin shaves off here and do another test fit. That seems to be a pretty much perfect fit. It just drops in and it slide this way, but there's very little perceptible wiggle that way, and bearing in mind these are on a taper anyway, so that I think will probably do. Uh, so if I can now get that out. Ooh. There we go. Right, so final stage is I need to just come around this edge. Uh, I'm going to have to come 4.5mm down and then come in and do some 6mm deep passes to go all the way through. And I just want to get rid of these 2.5mm radiuses because this has all been pocketed out with a 5mm slot drill. Uh, I could use uh, some of my dental burrs, which uh, I'm not sure are deep enough, but these are 1mm. Uh, another thing that I could possibly use 
would be one of these uh, Dremel bits, and I picked up a job lot of these many years ago, and this is 1.28 and this is plenty deep enough to get down. Uh, the problem with this is because it's a cross cut on the, uh, on the bit, it, it does tend to leave lines around it. So my next option, which is a little bit larger than I would like, but this is a, a 1.8mm slot drill and this has got plenty of uh, reach on it so I can definitely get in there 6mm down uh, and 45 along these bits. Uh, and that's got a spiral float, these are actually uh, coated with something or other so uh, these, these do leave a nice smooth cutting edge so that's probably what I'm going to use so I'll set that up. I also need to just cut a couple of reference marks in here so that if and when I need to put this back on and open that up by about half a millimetre I can reference off these uh, marks that I'm going to leave and uh, generally that's accurate to within a few tens of microns so we'll come in, get set up with that and give that a quick spin Well, that looks reasonably good, so um, yeah, I think we can probably call that done and start to put it together. Okay, well here are all the finished parts. I've recut this uh, runner plate and polished it up. I've just put a bit of a, a rounded uh, edge on these so that the, the runner will be easier to remove. I've also been around the inside edge of this surround frame uh, and just polished that up, which should also help. So, uh, which way around does this go? Let's start with the guide pins. For the, the pins, I'm just using 6mm cap head bolts because they just happen to be 10mm diameter and 6mm high so that means they are just the right size for the 6mm plate that I use and as long as I cut a 10mm hole to fit them this should just drop over the top like that. So that should be a fairly tight fit, which is what we want. So that goes together like that. And then this drops in there and gets secured from the back with a couple of small 4mm bolts. So let's put that in. And the other one should hopefully align. It seems it does. So tighten those up. Now oh, they're in place. So that's that bit. And then I need two more of my guide pins which go on the surround plate like that. And then that drops on there, creating the frame around it with a runner, and then this is our feed plate, which should go right way up, just drop on there. So that's our complete mould base. Uh, now we've just got to stick that in the moulding machine. I've got some plastic drying, going to be running some ABS on this, and we'll see if we can mould something. I've also added some uh, vents on the back, which I, I didn't film doing because I forgot about them, to be honest, and these are just 50 micron deep. 
and a, a slightly deeper channel to take the air to the outside. So without those, we're going to get air pockets at the corners and it won't fill properly. So apart from that little modification, everything is as per get that right there. Everything is as per the uh, original schematics. Um, with a bit of luck, that will mould. It's a little difficult to see in, but uh, here's the uh, base plate with the uh, the runner section, and that's bolted into the mould base that I use, and then that fits on top like that. And then obviously we're opening and closing the mould and squirting some plastic in through this hole here. It's going to be a little awkward to video it all, but uh, I'll show you the results in a few minutes. After a few cycles with some short shots, I'm starting to get complete frames now, so that just pops out there quite nice. There is a bit of sinking around the edges, which I shall try and fix next, and the runner is coming out quite nicely on that side. So uh, a few more minutes of dialing in the settings, and with a bit of luck we'll start to be getting some half-decent mouldings. For the record, these are the temperatures I'm running at, about 240, 250, it's ABS. I uh, have been running it a little bit hotter because there was some nylon in there beforehand. Uh, injection speeds, modest, high pressure, but that's the limit, not the actual injection pressure. Ridiculously long holding time on the injection, and likewise here on the holding pressures. Uh, none of this is making a great deal of difference. I'm still getting a lot of sinking. Uh, injection speed, 100 bar on the back pressure there. That's not making a great deal of difference and I'm up to 40 tonnes of clamp on the mould side. So I really don't quite know what's going on, but uh, I'm going to try a different material and just see if that makes any difference. Well, a few hours later and all I seem to have done is moulded scrap. I'm still getting horrible sink marks showing up down the edges here, uh, which isn't fantastic. I've been trying to get rid of those, tried different ABSs, tried different master batches to see if that would make any difference, but sadly it didn't. Uh, in desperation I decided I was going to recut the thing and uh, add some extra runners to the side of the frame so that instead of filling at a point uh, and then jetting out along these side edges I thought if I extend the runner I can fill more consistently all around. This didn't make an enormous difference uh, but swapping to nylon did. I was getting reasonably good edges in the nylon. Uh, so if I can zoom in a little bit on that. Maybe that will show up a little bit clearer. But uh, the problem with the nylon was I'm, I'm getting some marking along these edges. Uh, there's still a bit of pitting here and there's quite a lot of spray down this side here. Uh, and again on this edge here uh, you can see a few spray marks coming through. Uh, and I couldn't quite get rid of that. Some of the edges were coming up clean. That one's not too bad. But because this is a cosmetic finished product I really need clean edges all the way around. So in desperation I switched to using a nylon 6 uh, and this has done a much better job. I think perhaps it still needs a, a little bit more tweaking on the settings and perhaps a bit of a polish but that edge there is pretty shiny, pretty clean. There's a little bit of flash at the corners which just shows how much pressure I'm having to dump into this thing. I think it's up to 40 tonnes of clamp force uh, on the, uh, the mould side and 2,200 bar on the injection side, so that translates to about 13 tonnes of injection pressure, uh, but that's the only way I can get it to come up clean. Uh, and I don't think these are actually the, the best I can do, I think with a bit more messing around, perhaps increasing the temperature slightly, I might do slightly better than this, but um, not all materials are the same, so I think the ABS is a, a non-starter for this sadly, and we'll just have to make the rest of them out of nylon 6, but at least it does work.